uh, the Uganda martyrs who were not burned at Namugongo. There were 11. When you get 11, those who died outside Namugongo, you add the 13 who were burnt at Namugongo, we get the total of 24 Uganda martyrs. So let's see which Uganda martyrs were not burnt at Namugongo. Remember, persecution started way in 1885. Persecution against the faith, against those who were uh, baptized, those who were following the Catholic faith. And the first of the victims was Joseph Mukasabari Kutembe. This one, as we remember the history, was he, he tried to detest the death of Bishop Huntington, trying to plead why Bishop Huntington, the Anglican, was killed. And that one put him in problems with the king. But also, as we saw, it is said that uh, Katikiro, or Chief Mukasa, incited his killing because he thought this boy was so, uh, this man, Joseph Mukasa Wali Kutembe, was so gifted at one time, the, the king could... Um, promote him and he takes over his, his job, his position of a chief. So Joseph Mukasa Bari Kutembe um, was killed at um, in the middle of Kampala in the city at a place called Owino where there is now a current market called Owino or Bari Kutembe market. That's where he was killed. This one did not See the persecution at Namugongo. The second matter to be killed was Dennis Sebugwao. Sebugwao, uh, the patron saint of the musicians. To come third on the list was Andre Akagwa. Andre Akagwa and Dennis Sebugwao were killed at Munyonyo. And if time allows, we shall see the detail how they died. Ponsha Nongondwe followed. Gonza Gagonza on the way to Namugongo, he collapsed on the way and the king and the, he was pierced. He died at a place called Takajonge. Matthias Mulumba Kalemba did not die at Namgongo. When we come to St. Noah Mawagali, that one was killed in Mitiana. Because of the persecution, they were following every mission where this, uh, these matters were. Noah Mawagali is one of those who died a brutal death. He was killed and then his body was tied on a fig tree and then dogs came and started eating his legs. And after they had eaten him up to a given uh, uh, part, I think around the knee here, they got his body, put it in the junction, in the road junction, in order to scare the, the believers. St. John Mary Musei. This one died a year after the persecution, after the execution at Namugongo. For him, he died the following year. So in case they ask you which Uganda matter died a year after, that was John Mary Mosey. John Mary Mosey had exceptional qualities of treatment. He treated people at the time of smallpox and then uh, malaria because uh, the missionaries, because they found him with his... Um, gift of treating people using local herbs, they trained him more and then he was assisting the missionaries to treat people with smallpox and malaria. Then the ninth, the, the, the tenth one, we go now to the north, we go to the blessed. We see Daudo Kelo, uh, 1902, he's born and then he's catechized, then he becomes a catechist. He goes to the mission of Paimol, he starts teaching catechism. A group of invaders came and killed him brutally, got his body, 
to do it somewhere for a few days and then uh, passers by got his body um, tied a rope on his neck on the body dragged him to an empty ant anthill so Daudi Okello is a blessed he's not a, a canonized he was taken to an empty anthill the young catechist Judo Irwa had followed him at the mission of Paimo to teach catechism and word has it that this boy was um, was exceptional in gathering little children to teach them catechism. When Daud Okello was killed, they advised this young boy, run for your life because this one has died, they will also kill you. The boy said, no, we were here, we came together, we've been teaching the word of God. The very reason you have killed him, kill me also. He refused to go and he was killed for Christ. So those are the 11 Uganda martyrs who were not burnt at Namgongo. But these died in different places. At Mikiana, in the middle of the city, the current city, Kampala, at Munyonyo, and then uh, Gonza Gagonza dies on the way to Namgongo, he collapses, and then he's speared. And then we have Daudo Kelanji, the rather blessed, Katekis, in Paimol, in the north of Uganda. Thank you for listening. Uganda matters are surely matters you are. Our ancestors in faith. You are, you are. Uganda matters are surely matters you are. Our ancestors in faith. Hail, O. Oh. Holy Uganda matters. Hail all the matters of Acholi land. To our story of the Uganda matters, let's see the Uganda matters, the 13 who were killed at Namgongo on 3rd June 1886. Charles Ranga. St. Charles Ranga was killed at the very spot where the current altar at Namgongo is in that church which is uh, like a hut in the, in the image or built like a traditional hut, the African hut. That altar is where Karoli Ranga or Charles Ranga was killed and that's where his remains were found. Because for him, he decided, he requested to be burned in a slow fire. For him, he was not burned in the other fiery furnace. For him, he said, make the fire slow you know i want to die in a slow fire let the fire be that slow you know yeah he liked he he, <laughs> he requested for that slow fire so it burnt him to the marrows and that's why they could be able to find his remains the others were all burnt in the fiery furnace saint javira mayanja musoke was killed at Namgongo. And as we saw, he was a son of a traditional healer, Musoke, who believed in a god called Musoke. And the father wanted him, was training him to take over from him as being a traditional healer. And why they added the name Javira was because where he came from, they believed on their hill, they had a lion, a lion which could... <laughs> Could devour people and there was a lot of devil worship and witchcraft fear oh my god witchcraft in that place was too much the devil worship so when he joined the palace his uh, these other uganda matters and the people around the palace they were saying that one javira javira <laughs> that javira as in it translate like be careful or be fearful of where he comes from He's a feared person. He comes from a, a dangerous family. So be careful. So they gave him the name Javier. Some of these names, they were given, um, they were nicknames, which of course later were christened. Like Javira is just saying, be careful of where he comes from. He comes from a dangerous place. Javira, where he comes from. It's not an easy place. So that's how he got his name. St. Adolf Mukasa Ludigo. 
His name was Adolf Mukasa, but then he was added on the name Rodrigo because he resembled a certain chief. <laughs> In Usoga, he was, who was called Lodigo, so they added on the name Lodigo. Some of these names were nicknamed, but which later were Christian somehow. <laughs> Saint Mukasa Chiriwawavu. Something important to note about Mukasa Chiriwawavu. He's one of the Uganda martyrs who is particular, who is peculiar, sorry, in a way. He did not receive baptism. He was not baptized. The persecution was too much. By the time uh, Charles Ruanga was to baptize him, it was quite late. He's called a Uganda martyr who was baptized, who received the baptism of blood. So for him, he did not get a Christian name. But he was in... Okay, why was he not baptized when Charles Ruanga was baptizing the rest? He had already been put in prison. So when they... they recognized him in prison that he was also one of the Uganda martyrs. The king also sent for him that he should come and be burnt at Namgongo. So when he was brought to Namgongo, they wanted to be sure that he was one of the Uganda martyrs. So they asked him to identify himself, whether he was not like any other prisoner. They have just got from prison and they kill him for nothing. So they told him to identify himself. Do you know how he identified himself? He said, I'm one of them. And to show that I'm one of them, let me profess my faith because he had already learned the faith. So he said the creed. And after professing his faith, they said for sure this is one of them. He was also put on the fire and he was killed. St. Ambrose Chiwanuka Katikamu. This one was baptized by Father Simeon Lutero. Mapelas, I, I told you, there are many perspectives in which you can look at the Uganda matters. One of them is how they were baptized. Some of them were baptized by the missionaries, Father Simeon Lutero. Others were baptized by Father Jiro. Others were baptized by Charles Ruanga. And then we have seen Mukasa Chiwawanvo was not baptized at the time of the, of the baptism when the persecution was taking place. So Ambrose Chibuka also died at St. Archilis Chuanuka also was burnt at Namgongo. Something uh, nice about him, he destroyed his amulets for protection. These uh, things of devil worship, the, of witchcraft, they had tied around him from his home to protect him against uh, any calamities. He destroyed them and so... Uh, uh, denounced the traditional beliefs. Saint Anatoly Chibigwajo also was one of those who was burnt at Namgongo. Saint James Buza Valiawo Kalumba Sevaiga was also was burnt at Namgongo. Saint Mugagaluboa is also one of those who was burnt at Namgongo. Saint Mbaga Tuzinde this one was a relative of Mukajanga, the chief executioner, and he tried to persuade him. My son, please, don't go, don't be bad. Please, come, come and, um, and I give you custody. The boy said, no, for the sake of Christ, I have to be killed. I have to die for Jesus. And did you know how he got the name Mbaga? He was in charge of catering in the king's palace when he was still a royal page. And then when uh, Charles Shuanga came in, um, gave him the responsibility of, of <laughs> still of catering, of hospitality and catering. So he was in charge of distributing meat. <laughs> okay, giving meat. And so when they would come and ask him, please give me some meat, add me more meat, please some meat, he would ask him one question. Mbaga. Okay, now Lady Jesus King sent him Mbaga, asking him for more meat. I said, Mbaga, please give me some meat. Mbaga, please add me some meat. He would ask me, Mbaga. Mbaga is the question which means, am I slaughterer? Am I the one who slaughtered? Am I the one who slaughters? So they gave him the name 
Mbaga, because wherever he would, <laughs> wherever he would be asked for more meat, <laughs> he would ask you, am I the slaughterer? Am I the one slaughtering? <laughs> That's how he got the name Mbaga. <laughs> St. Bruno Serunkoma <laughs> was baptized by Father Jiro, one of the Catholic missionaries. This one received also some temptation. The king, to appreciate him for his uh, ex exceptional qualities and good service, gave him two wives. He took, <laughs> he took them home, but then when he received the Christianity, he, he left them, he repented, and received his sacraments. He's the patron saint of those tempted, who are tempted excessively, and then those who are uh, tempted by excessive drinking. Because on the way to Namugongo to be persecuted, he had a brother of his who was called Bosa. He brought him the local brew and told him, my brother, drink some and get courage. But he refused it. So he's the patron saint of those who are addicted to drinking and those who are suffering with the temptation of polygamy or of women. Because of the story of the Uganda matters, many pilgrims have come to Uganda. Thousands of pilgrims, millions of pilgrims have come to Uganda from different countries and from within Uganda. The African countries, uh, like today, we've had Tanzania, we've had West African countries, we've had Kenya, we've had Burundi, Rwanda. Many countries have come. Thousands and millions of pilgrims have come. And do you know Uganda became the first African country to be visited by three popes? Three popes have come to Uganda because of the story of the Uganda matters, this exceptional faith. The first pope to come to Uganda was Pope, pope Paul VI, who came here from the 31st to the 2nd of August. Uh, 31st July to the 2nd of August, 1969. The second pope to come to Uganda was sent Pope John Paul II from the 5th to the 10th of February, 1993. And then our current beloved Pope Francis came to Uganda just recently from 27th to 29th November, 2015, three pops have come to Uganda because of the story of the Uganda Matters. Holy Matters of Uganda, pray for us. Our take home from these stories, number one. The youngest Uganda matter was Kizito. He was baptized. John Baptist. Number two, 11 Uganda matters were not killed at Namugongo. They did not reach Namugongo. They died before. Number three, the first Ugandan matter to be killed was St. John. Sorry. <laughs> the first Uganda matter to be killed, the proto matter, was Joseph Mukasa Balikudembe. The Uganda matter to die one of the most brutal deaths was Noah Mawagali in Mitiana, whose body was tied on a fig tree and dogs were eating his flesh until his body was taken in the road junction 
to frighten the believers. Number four. Number four. The Uganda matter to receive the baptism of blood. Do we remember him in our story? Do we remember Saint Mukasa Chiwiwawangu was the first and the only Uganda matter who died without being baptized? Because by the time Charles Uwanga was baptizing them throughout the through the persecution on 26th of May, 1886, this one was in prison. And by the time they brought him, baptism already had taken place. So for him, he died a baptism of blood. We have something else. Yes, another matter. Andrea Kagwa. At Munyonyo. He was killed in two places. You can say in two places. His body. In the, in, near the stream or down in the valley is, is cut off the head is cut oh my god I don't want to talk about the way he was cut into pieces until he died again at a different spot and the only Uganda matter who baptized the rest was Charles Ranga and Charles Ranga is the Uganda matter whose remains we use at whose remains became our relics because it's the only Uganda matter whose bones were found. His, his body was found, the, the bones were found because for him, he accepted to die in a slow fire. So that slow fire did not consume his bones. His relics were found and we have them till today. Another take home, Gonza Gagonza was persecuted at Munyonyo. You remember Munyonyo is where the judgment of the Uganda, but I didn't tell you this, that the Uganda matters received their judgment at Munyonyo. The, you know where the current minor basilica is at Munyonyo, the Uganda matters minor basilica? That was the king's palace where the judgment of the Uganda matters to be killed at Namugongo took place. So Gonza Kagonza was uh, tortured there. He was fastened on chains. And as he was moving to Namugongo, I think the chains had really entered his body. He did not reach. He collapsed. And then Mukajanga, the chief executioner, pierced him himself. Friends, that's the little I could share with you. Hope you have enjoyed the Uganda Matters and today we are celebrating the faith of the Uganda Matters. And by the way, I didn't tell you the miracle, you know, to become a saint, there is a miracle that the church needs to base on. Can I leave you an assignment of the miracle of the Uganda Matters, how they came to be canonized? Do we remember the, the, the sisters at Rivaga Hospital, those, uh, those white nuns? who had a, uh, wow, how is it called? A plague. And they had, they had tried all medication. They had tried every treatment and they could not be healed until they prayed to the Uganda matters. They said, but this country has got 24 Uganda matters. Why can't we pray to them to pray for us for this uh, plague? What is the name of that? Is it a bubonic plague? Someone can correct me there. But it was a very serious sickness that was almost claiming their lives. So the nuns prayed and they got healed miraculously and it was on this um, miracle that the Catholic Church really attributed holiness and hmm, holiness and how can I say, heroic life of the Uganda matters and attributed that miracle to the Uganda matters and they were canonized. What have we not shared? Lastly, 11 Uganda martyrs were not burnt at Namgongo but met their death in different places. 13 Uganda martyrs 
die that na mgongo. Did I tell you some Uganda matters? First embraced other religions. Did I tell you? <laughs> Uh, who is this one who first became a Muslim because he had interacted with the Arabs and then later on when the Anglican missionaries came, he also got now baptized in the Anglican faith, but he found the truth in the Catholic Church. Matthias Kalemba Mulumba had many wives. That is also an important take home. Matthias Kalumba Kalemba Mulumba Wante. He had many wives. But when he received Christianity, he learned that you needed to marry one woman. So he left the rest and married only one. Mother Mary, Queen of the Uganda Matters, pray for us. St. Charles Ranga and all the Uganda Matters Pray for us. Baba Julie Sabete Ndoba Na Faba Sida Mwe Afrika Wakati Nga Mwe Sime Ave Wayo Olwe Tindi Nga Mwe Sime Mwe Aba Sida Mwe Aba Sida Mwe Uganda Kamulina Yesu Mutu Sabide Tukwa Tenda Feti in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.